Hi everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. This is FC with CappersDirect.com here to bring you guys your first look preview into UFC Vegas 71 that goes down this Saturday, March 11th in Vegas. It's going to be Jan versus Marab Devishwili. But before we get into that, a little housekeeping guys. UFC 285 was this past Saturday and we killed it. It's, it was almost a perfect night, but let's just get into it very, very quickly. We won't spend too much time on it. In the Julian Marquez fight, Mark andre Berry, we went over 1.5 rounds, no problem. In the Derek Brunson fight, we went over 1.5, no problem winner there. In the Jamie Pickett Bo Nickel fight, we went Bo Nickel by submission. Another another winner, right? So automatically, we're three and zero on the night. We're flying high. We're killing it. And then the underdog comes up, and we have Jalen Turner versus Mateus Gamrot. And guys, you could go look everywhere. It was a split decision loss for us, but I mean, we took the plus one eighty, and I thought we did enough to win. It was it was control over damage, and I always go towards damage. Judges have been favoring more damage. This is one instance where it seemed like the control of Mateus Gamrot was getting the best. And then Jalen getting rocked in there. But man, Jalen kept rocking Mateus Gamrot. I mean, twice in a round, just rocking him. And, and Mateus would come back to the corner and be like, I lost that round because I, I don't know what, what hit me. What hit me? It, it was just, I thought we had won that fight. But hey, you know what? It was a plus 180 shot. We took a small, small, small loss there. We're like, all right, no problem. And then we went with the over 1.5 rounds in the Jeff Neal fight, guys. No problem at all. Overall, a successful card. Really, really great. We only lost that one small bet that was plus money. But, hey, we knocked it out of the park. And then you guys know we're on a roll with these Max Fight Picks. These Max Fight Picks have been hitting every single week. We're on 15 out of 16 of the last Max Fight Picks have hit. So then this one comes up. And I'm, I'm torn. I, I knew I wanted to make John Jones a max fight pick. But, guys, everybody was like, no, it's, it's gone. Gone's aside. Everybody I was talking to, even the people that, that I respect in this industry were like, gone's aside. But following John Jones, John Jones, I mean, there's a lot of things that went on in that camp. There's a lot of things that we know about that went on in that camp. A lot of training partners, different places that he's trained throughout the years. We got to follow and talk to him about those things. So, guys, we were really confident, super confident. We put out the Max Fight Pick. John Jones, after a three-year layoff, we, we again, had the testicular fortitude to say, guys, best bet of the night is going to be John Jones, just like we did the prior two times, even though it was a fight doesn't go to decision in a female fight, even though we're taking – a, a, a prospect over a veteran who everyone was on the veteran, right? Even though it's minus 105, doesn't matter, guys. We take the best bet. The best bet on this card was John Jones. John Jones came out there and made Cyril Gond look like a child. He won the fight in the first two minutes. I mean, Cyril Gond didn't know what he was doing. We <laughs> there were there was a lot there's a lot of technicality that goes into these things, and I'm just gonna let you know right now. I had full confidence in John Jones. I try to tell you in the write-up, guys. I'm trying to let you guys know. John Jones, John Jones inside the distance. I had everyone betting John Jones by submission. I bet John Jones by submission. I bet John Jones inside the distance. I was telling everybody, and I try to put it in that write-up. Guys, John Jones is, if there's ever a lock, it's going to be John Jones versus Cyril Gaon after seeing everything that John Jones did. Guys, 15 out of 16. I mean, I can't, I can't sit here <laughs> And emphasize enough, why aren't you guys on this? I mean, everyone in the world should be on this. It's the best bet of the night, guys. We 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 do a lot of research. We put in a ton of work. And again, we knocked it out of the park, not only with the card. Knocked it out of the park with the max fight pick. But, all right, guys. Let's get into your first look preview for this UFC Vegas 71 that goes down Saturday, March 11th, guys. It's going to be a good card, and we're going to keep winning. So, let's get into it right now. All right, so let's hit this one from the back, guys. Let's go into your main event. The main event, it's going to be a good fight, guys. It's coming at you from the bantamweight division. We have Peter Yan versus Marab Davishvili. Guys, let's get into the Peter Yan side first. Actually, both these guys are very similar in age. They're similar in reach. They're similar in record even. I mean, Peter Yan's 16 and 4. The issue with Peter Yan is he's coming in here with a two-fight losing streak. The guy is still good, though. He's still elite. Those two fights, I mean, even if you look at his last four fights, really, he's he's one in three, right? 
out of his last four. He just had some really, really bad luck. I mean, other than the fact that he needed to learn how to fight in a three-round fight, in a five-round fight, he's really good because Peter Jan systematically breaks you down. He takes the first round, and he likes to download that kind of data, the data that you're throwing at him. Everything you're moving with, he'll take shots. He'll he'll kick a few leg kicks out there, and he'll throw punches. And if he has a beat on you early, he's going to try to put it on you early. But he likes to gauge, and sometimes he can give away rounds. Sometimes if he gives away that first round because he likes to do that downloading, and then, hey, someone takes him down in round two and controls him, that's already two rounds down, Like unless you get to finish in the third. So... He knows that he needs to figure this thing out. And at the end of the day, he's coming in here with amazing takedown defense. The only thing that you saw that Peter Jan sort of had an issue with is when Aljamain Sterling took him down. But they were wrestling takedowns that transitioned to like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu moves. So Marab Davish really, let's look at his side because it's very important. Marab's teammate is Aljo. Marab, again, very similar in age. I mean, he's two years older, very similar in reach and height. He's 15 and four, where where Jan is 16 and four, and at the end of the day, Marab's on a crazy, crazy winning streak because he's an amazing wrestler. He's a cardio machine, guys. But he's a cardio machine at three rounds. What's he gonna look like at five rounds? I've always been interested, and I've always sort of said that Marab at five rounds, no problem. But that was before Marab had a five round fight. You know what I'm saying? Like that's me talking stuff on the street. Like, oh yeah, Marab does really. He got this. Like no problem, right? Marab, he can go. He can go for twenty rounds on him. Like that. that but when you push comes to shove, I really gotta know if Marab's cardio is on point. It's always on point. But even recently, I've sort of seen when he's pushed those limits that. In the third round, he huffs and puffs, but then at the end, he's always good, and he, he always talks about how he can get five more rounds of work in. So, I'm 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 fairly confident that he's doing really well, and he can do a five round fight. I just don't know the style of Marab Davis really is to take someone down, and he doesn't necessarily hold them down. A lot of times, they get back up. If you if you're setting the record for the most amount of takedowns in a fight. I mean, that's because your first takedown, they got up. Your second takedown, they got up. Your third, they got up. The thing about him, though, is he's relentless with these takedowns, and he's not going to stop. He's going to continue to move forward. And at this weight class, they are very scrambly, and that's why Peter Jan has a really good takedown defense. I mean, Aljamain Sterling took him down, but Aljamain Sterling, when he did take him down, he took him down with some wrestling and then transitioned to the back right away. Marab Dushvili is a guy who just powers double legs, powers people down, uses that strength, uses that cardio to his advantage. So it's a different style of wrestling, but Marab has been training with Aljo and Aljo's like, Aljo's telling me that Marab's got this. And I know Aljo like talks crap sometimes and he, he likes to shoot, you know, shoot the stuff with you. And th there's this, there's this sense of, of just this boisterous, like overconfidence, but Sometimes he can get down to earth with you and be like, no, I'm, I'm really serious. I really think, I think Marab's better than me. And I think Marab's just going to eat this guy's lunch. So if you guys want to know what I think, I think Marab is currently value because the, the, for some odd reason, money is still coming in on Peter Jan. People are seeing the fact that he's got a 90 plus takedown defense that he, he's, he's really good at fighting those things off and then systematically breaking you down. He's going to be kicking Marab's legs. He's going to be throwing stuff out there. Marab's been hurt before. We've also seen Peter Jan hurt. We've seen Marab throw from his hip, not necessarily be as technical as Peter Jan. A lot of people are looking at that and saying Peter Jan all the way, all day. Guys, I I'm on the Marab side as of now. I think the value sitting with Marab and on Friday, you guys are going to tune into the write-up because this may change dramatically. And if it does change, it's going to be because I have Peter Jan by something, by submission or by knockout because I got some really good information. Or if Marab, something's wrong with him or he's looking a little flabby or he does his cardio's not up, we're going to let you know. We're going to find out that stuff this week. And on Friday in the write-up, you're going to want to pay attention to this fight because I'm pretty sure we're going to have a bet on it. But it's going to be a good fight. Let's get into your next fight. All right, so let's get into your co-main event. The co-main event is coming at you from the heavyweight division. We have Alexander Volkov versus Alexander Romanov. Let's get into the Volkov side first. Volkov's coming in here, 34 years old. The guy is huge. They don't call him Draco for no reason. He's 6'7 with an 80-inch reach. He's a striker, kickboxer, a little bit slower as he's getting older, 
but he put a lot of muscle on his frame so that he can avoid some of these takedowns and really fight some of these fighters. Before, he was a lot skinnier, a lot faster, and I see that muscle working for him. He's been able to fight a lot of takedowns. It hasn't been as easy, but people that know how to wrestle, people that know technique, man, they can have Volkov's number. Uh, he can be taken down. And really, it's a big motivation thing for Volkov. I've seen his motivation, these ebbs and flows with his motivation throughout the years. And I want to know if he's on a downturn. The last fight, he was on his way down. He was not motivated. He was training, but he was injured. There were a lot of problems with that camp. I need to see this week if he's going to be more motivated because he's going up against someone that is beatable, but someone that has his number as well. He's going up against Alexander Romanov. Alexander's 32, 6'2", so he's going to be shorter and he's going to have a 75-inch reach. At the end of the day, Alexander Romanov is a wrestler. He has a sumo background and can take anyone down. He will throw anyone to the ground. He'll, he'll transition from double leg to single leg. And then when he gets you down, he has a series of arm chokes and he has a series of arm locks that are very unorthodox and can be hit from areas you're not used to and see we know that Volkov can be taken down we know that Volkov once taken down can be submitted so guys that I mean the side is Romanov Romanov is the side but there is a big red flag on the Romanov side. There's going to be reasons why it's winnable for Volkov. If Volkov can fight off the takedowns or even get taken down in round one but just not finished, you're going to see a very tired Romanov. The guy does not have a gas tank. And really, it's holding him back. These are going to be... These are these are winnable fights from The UFC's throwing him a winnable fight here. But he may have to do some work because Volkov's not a slouch. Like, Volkov is a vet at the end of the day. And if he's motivated, he's going to make it really, really hard. He may make it past that first round. And then you have to have the gas tank to take him down again in the second. And in the third, if this were a five-round fight, I don't know how Romanoff will ever fight a five-round fight unless he gets you out in the first two rounds. But at the end of the day, though, even though Alexander Volkov has different paths of victory by extending the fight and then landing a knockout... Or, or, or just fighting off the takedown and using elbows to rock Romanov. And then as Romanov gets gassed, I mean, his head's going to be there to be hit. So while he has those win, those win, that win equity, I just totally see Romanov taking him down and probably getting a first round submission. But I'm going to find out about Volkov's motivation because it could be pretty interesting. The over here, because it's probably going to be over 1.5. And if I see Volkov doing the right things, I mean... He may he may be the side. He may he may be the side and, and he may the over may hit. If he can extend this fight and then just piece Romanoff off in the second and third round, he can get a late finish. So as of right now though, I like Romanoff. I like Romanoff by first round submission. I think he gets one of those arm locks pretty early. So that's what I got for you right now. But tune in Friday for that write up. Now, let's get into your next fight. Alright, so let's get into your next fight. Your next fight is coming at you at a catch weight. It was the main event for a couple weeks ago, and I've already broken down this fight like two times, so if you guys want to reference the past video, you totally can. We're not going to spend too much time on it. We're talking about Nikita Krylov versus Ryan Spann, guys. Let's talk about Nikita Krylov slightly. He's 30 years old, 6'3", 77.5 inch reach. He has motivation currently for days. That's one thing that we saw. He has motivation, and in his mind, he's got value. He's going to come out here and he's planning to put it on Ryan Spann pretty early. I know when this fight originally happened, we had the under 1.5 rounds and it didn't matter. We were already winning that night so much that it was just kind of like a little bit of a bonus. But that is one thing I like because Nikita Krylov was ready to come out. He was dealing with some sickness, so he was ready to just get this fight over with. He was going to go out there and put it on Ryan Spann early and... Those, those motivation things are still there. I still see the fire in Nikita Krylov. I'll let you guys know if the under 1.5 is going to be as prevalent in this matchup as it was in the prior one. But that sickness, it, it's something that he couldn't get over. He couldn't get medically cleared. And so that fight literally fell off at, I think, a fight into the card or something crazy like that. They were just like, guys, we lost the main event. Sorry. And guess the new main event is Brandon Allen versus Andre Muniz. And it was... It was kind of a weird event, but hey, it was profitable for us. And this fight's probably going to be at three rounds. I think that's what they settled with. L looking at Ryan Spann, he's 31 years old. He's going to be 6'5", so he's going to be taller. He's going to have 81.5-inch reach. 
Um, he's going to be that long striker, and he's very, very powerful. He can catch people. Uh, honestly, guys, if I'm just going to, I'm just going to break this down very, very subtly. I think Nikita Krylov has volume, and I think he has the ability to go into rounds two, round three, and really put together a good, solid game plan to to beat Ryan Spann. So I can see why he's favored. But guys, I like Ryan Spann in this fight. I like Ryan Spann by first round submission. I know it sounds crazy, and. I, I know I put it in the write-up last time. Ryan Spann has been really working the submission series, and I, I think that Nikita Krylov, the the old Nikita Krylov, the one that I, I knew coming in with a little bit of an illness, was going to come and really try to put it on Ryan Spann, and Ryan Spann was going to either have a chance to knock him out and, or close the distance, wrap him up, and then you would have seen that series come out. So I like Ryan Spann in the first round, either by KO or by submission, and I don't I don't mind the submission line. So I'm just going to be point blank and honest. Though I like the under 1.5 because I still think Nikita Krylov is going to come out and try to put it on Ryan Spann, and I like Ryan Spann to probably get the submission in round one. But you guys are going to tune in Friday because I, I have to check up on Nikita Krylov. I have to make sure everything's okay. Ryan Spann coming in here, I know he wanted it at a catch weight they got it at a catch weight i need to find out some more information about this fight to give you guys a better perspective now but i'm letting you know those two leans are sort of in the pocket under one and a half and ryan span by first round submission but gonna be a good fight let's get into your next fight all right so let's get into your second to last fight it's coming at you from the featherweight division we have ricardo ramos versus austin lingo Guys, this is a tricky fight. Let's look at Ricardo Ramos first. He's 27 years old. He's 5'9", 72-inch reach. He's 16-4. and four. Guys, Ricardo is a mentally weak kickboxer, but he's Brazilian. He's the kind of kickboxer that he looks very sharp. He looks very crisp, very on point until he gets hit in the face, and you can see his face go like... And when it does that, he there's a switch there. There's a transition where he, he begins to overthink things, the, this game plan. Things that he worked out aren't working, and he will break. He can be broken. But there's one thing that we have seen from Ricardo Ramos, and in, in looking at the Ricardo Ramos camp, they're, they're looking at this currently. Ricardo Ramos needs to go for takedowns in this fight. He's done it in the past. He's been able to go with a takedown-heavy game plan, knowing that he had someone... With that disadvantage, he had the ability, he had that advantage to go in there and take him down at will and, and really work submissions, get to the back, really put him in danger. And then we have Austin Lingo here. Austin Lingo's 28 years old. He's 5'10", 72 inch reach. He's 9 and 1. Guys, the guy's nickname is Lights Out. And it's for a reason. He hits very hard. He likes to eat fighters like Ricardo Ramos. And that's what's important. Ricardo Ramos is going to stay out there and be technical at first. If he doesn't shoot for the takedown and gain that confidence and start building that confidence in a fight, Ricardo Ramos is going to lose this fight because Austin Lingo likes to take the will out of people. He likes to look at someone in their eyes and see the light sort of just, just fizzle out. He's the kind of fighter that will move forward, swing bombs, and he's coming off of a little bit of a year layoff. Had some things happen, and, and but he's getting better, guys. He looks good. He knows that everyone's going to want to take him down because he's the guy who doesn't care. He's going to go out there and swing huge, swing big. And, he, again, he doesn't care if he gets knocked out. I've seen him rock before, but he's one of these guys that, like, first round all the time. This is first round lingo, pretty much. Like, the guy goes out there and gets the job done. And the UFC has been a little bit different. He's been able to show a little bit of, of a wrinkle there, but... He's also, I think he can be taken down. And I think Ricardo Ramos, if he comes in here with that proper game plan, I think Ricardo Ramos can win this fight. The part that's tricky is Ricardo Ramos, again, can be mentally broken. No one's going to talk about this mental broken side of Ricardo Ramos. But it's there. You hit him hard enough, you will see this oh snap moment. This moment where he just like, I can't believe it. Like, this guy's not going down. He's good. This guy, this guy hits hard double take his face just just almost melts it gets like the worry you can see just go over his face of like oh no this is not what i thought and so austin lingo's that kind of fighter he's that kind of fighter that's going to put it on you so much that he's going to take that confidence away so as of right now i have to look at ricardo ramos i have to look at ricardo ramos maybe by submission because i know that they're coming in here with that game plan i want to know if they're going to stick to it i want to know how committed ricardo ramos is those are sort of the things i need to see in the training room if ricardo ramos is sitting there and he's not shooting at all and he's sitting there just blocking stuff and and going technical 
<laughs> what's going on, Ricardo? Like, where are the takedowns? Like, I want to see you drilling this all week. So that's what's going to be important. You guys are going to tune in Friday for that write-up. But as of right now, like I said, Ricardo Ramos, sort of like him by submission, sort of like him to maybe by decision, sort of take this thing down and ride it out. Again, the tricky part, Austin Lingo is going to come out here and swing, and he can take that away. He can take the confidence away from Ricardo Ramos. You're going to see a different animal. Ricardo Ramos, at that point, goes from being a lion to being a cat. And that's just that's just what he goes through. So the possibilities there. So Let's get into your last fight. All right, so your last fight on the main card is coming at you from the bantamweight division. We have a good one here, guys. We have Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Jonathan Martinez. Look at let's look at the Nurmagomedov side first. He's 5'8", 30 years old, 70 inch reach. Very similar when it comes down to intangibles because you have Jonathan Martinez coming in. And he's also 5'8". He's coming in here with he's only 28 years old and he's coming in here with a 29.5 inch reach. So 70 70 inch reach. 69.5 30 years old 28 in the same height but and both of them are really good strikers but Saeed let's look at his side I mean the guy is a really good striker he has some really sneaky strikes and he has some really good submissions as well he's a decent grappler he used to wrestle a lot more and in the wrestling room he's pretty good it just hasn't necessarily translated into the UFC because he has fallen in love with his hands and he's very, very good. Very good striker, very sneaky, good volume, great power, solid overall fighter with sneaky shots. That's the way I would describe Saeed Nurmagomedov. In his last fight, he was losing. We did bet against him very, very low, but he was losing that fight until he just he got a choke at the end. I mean, I mean he got a choke and... That, that was it, right? Losing the whole fight until he wasn't. I mean, even he was like, I, I don't know how that happened, but I won, and I'm just going to take it and go. And that was recently. Now, let's look at Jonathan Martinez. Again, very similar attributes, but he's a good striker, but he's a striker that can be broken. I think we talked about it in a past in a past write-up and, and in a past video. Jonathan Martinez is another one of these guys that can be overwhelmed. And when you overwhelm Jonathan Martinez, you can see the light in his eyes just start just start to dim a little bit. The confidence really goes down. The volume goes down because now he doesn't know what's coming his way. But he will stay on it. I mean, he has a good corner. His corner will yell at him the exact directions on what to do when he gets hurt. But the issue is, is when he does get hurt, he can shoot for a takedown. And we know Saeed Nurmagomedov, he's just really good at, at, at grabbing some chokes, some unorthodox chokes. And if you're rocked even a little bit, you're going to put your neck in danger. He will snatch it up. So I can see why everyone's on the Saeed Nurmagomedov side. I, I like him in this fight. I've rarely bet against Jonathan Martinez because he is so solid. He is really good. But... At the end of the day, guys, I just can't see myself landing on Jonathan Martinez, a Jonathan Martinez who I know can be taken down. I don't expect Saeed Nurmagomedov to necessarily come out here and take him down, even though he should. But Saeed Nurmagomedov, I think he touches Jonathan Martinez. I've always thought Jonathan Martinez can be overwhelmed. And in being overwhelmed, his chin is vulnerable. We saw Davy Grant just knock him out and rock him. We've seen him rocked in other fights before. I think this fight, I think he goes out. He goes out cold. I think Saeed Nurmagomedov ends up either choking him out, which I don't see that happening. I see I see him rocking him, and I, I see it ending. I know a lot of people see this going to decision. I don't necessarily. I see Saeed Nurmagomedov doing work, but... It's going to be a good fight. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Now, guys, I have a very big surprise coming to you next week from FC. I'm telling you guys. So right now in the comment section below, put in there surprise because I'm telling you guys, we're going to have a surprise next week. And don't forget to pick up that Max Fight Pick. Red Hot right now, guys, tell you every week, pick it up. Pick up the card. Pick up the Max Fight Pick. It's going to happen on Saturday. Bellator is going to be on Friday, and you're going to hear the Bellator preview coming up very, very shortly. It's a shorter card, so we're going to break it down. But I'm telling you guys, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe, leave that comment surprise because we're going to have a surprise next week for you. But March 11th in the UFC, it's going to be a great day to win, baby. Let's get it.